Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Church of a Little Flower, and thank you for joining us for this Eucharistic celebration of our life in Christ. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin, we kindly ask that you please turn off all cell phones at this time. Our presiding priest will be Father Omar Ayubi. Please turn to page five in your bulletins and stand and join in singing our processional hymn, Shepherd of Souls. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. And today, actually, I am extremely happy just to see our sisters back. And now we have even more, seven of them. So welcome, sisters, back home. As we continue with this celebration, today we are reminded again about the bread of life, Christ himself, as we heard that last week, and it will be a little more, one more week into this, the discourse of uh, John the Apostle in his gospel about the bread of life. So with that in mind, dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth these two people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty, 
pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread from the Lord that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of the Lord 
and the wonders that he wrought. The Lord gave them bread. Commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them bread, bread from heaven. He sent them in abundance, and he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus. That you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his, his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? 
Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen. I say to you, it was not Moses who gave, them, who gave the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading, the first word that caught my attention was grumbling. Something I know it perfectly how to do. And I have a feeling that all of you also know how to grumble. Because that actually is a very common human behavior. See, we are never satisfied. It doesn't matter how good things may be, we will always find a way to grumble about it. That's just, it, it has happened all the time. And we see now in the first reading how after God has taken his people out of slavery in Egypt, I'm telling you, they were not having fun. They were being abused from left and right in all possible ways. He managed to get them out of that state and now they are in the middle of the desert, right? And of course, they don't remember what happened by now. They, they, they can't even think, you know, all the wonders that, G, that God made happen so that they were able to be liberated, but they only see that it is very hot, that they have to walk in the middle of the desert, that they are thirsty and hungry. And their eyes can only fix, are fixated on that. And of course, they're going to grumble. Moses, we had onions and steak and lamb and carrots and celery in Egypt, and you're taking us over there and bring us over here so that we can die? How dare you? Forgetting the suffering they, had, they went through before. Does it look like us in any way? Because we have not changed. We are just identical as the Israelites. We can never have enough. And our minds are always consumed on all these little things. How bad people drive around here. My husband is driving me crazy. My wife, what is she thinking? How is it possible that my kids are not, in, I'm not here in church when I gave them all this education? my best friend, my co-worker, my boss, a reasonable human being, etc., etc., etc. And we only put our minds and all our energy into these things. And today in the Gospel, Jesus gives us a perfect example about the same thing. Last week we heard the miracle of the multiplication of fish and loaf. And these people, after being filled, that's what it says, fed to be full. Now they're running behind Jesus. And Jesus is kind of hiding from them. And he clearly says, you're not coming to me because you truly believe who I am, but because I can give you food so that you can fill up your, your bellies. And if it's not the case, I don't want to see you. He didn't say that. But that's the whole point. 
And the question for us today is, how do we really see Christ? All of us here, we come to this place, to, the temp, to this wonderful and be beautiful building, because we come first to hear the, the word and second to be fed by Jesus, his body, his blood, soul, and divinity. But how do we really take him? Do we do this just because we have to come here on Sundays and everybody has to, you know, to come and receive and, well, I, I, got, I guess I'm going to have to do that? Or I really do this because I know who he is and what he really means. It's amazing how we, even in the church, and all of us as being part of the church, we just put always attention in the wrong things. And celebrate yesterday beautiful baptism. Rosa's nephew, right? And it was a wonderful experience, right? But as you could see, in every, sing, every sacrament, perhaps we are most consumed into how, are, what am I going to dress? When can I take the picture so I can have, you know, a moment, uh, so I can remember the moment? How can I, you know, then the after lunch or party and that applies for everything, for the First Communion, for confirmation, for marriage. It is all about all the previous details, and we, which are very good. I'm not saying they're not good, which I think that we need that, yes. But we do not really pay attention to what is truly eternal. Jesus is telling us, I am the bread of life. And if you come to me, you will never thirst and you will never hunger. And the people of God, his people said, what are we supposed to, how can we do the work, the works of God? And he responds beautifully. Uh, where is it? This is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent, the one who sent me. So what we need to do is always an act of faith. That from the moment that we wake up, the one who has to be in our minds has to be Jesus that I really need to invite him, if I truly believe who he is, I don't know about you, my dear brothers and sisters, but if we truly believe that Jesus is really present here in front of us, all of us will be crawling on this floor instead of walking. Even if we couldn't, think for a, for a second, for just one second, if you would be able to see Jesus Christ full flesh in front of you, what would you do? What will be your reaction? Just think about it. And the beauty of this is that we don't even have to imagine that because he is with us here. He's always, and he will always come and make himself present in this altar for you, for me, for all. And all I have to do is truly make that act of faith, belief, and invite him to be with me in everything that I do, in everything that I plan to do, that he wants to be part of that. It's not just when I come here on Sundays. It's not just when I decide to go to bed and I, you know, and I put myself in his presence and throw a couple prayers and there you go, that's my prayer life. But it has to be everywhere so then I can see him all over the place so that then instead of me criticizing how people drive around, then I probably begin praying for them so they may learn one day 
that this is not about them getting first, but just getting where they need to go. That perhaps my boss that is very unreasonable, what he needs is some prayers from, my, from me so that they, me, he may have peace and then be true, truly, a real good human being. That whatever problem I have with my husband or my wife, then I might be able to really, you know, get in touch and communicate with one another and then find a medium so that we can have peace in our home. But I have to really invite him. Remember Emmaus, these two disciples got out of Jerusalem after they have seen the crucifixion and they were devastated. So bad and they were so sad. And their sadness, their eyes were all fixated on that cross where Jesus, the Messiah, was dead. And they could not even recognize that the one walking next to them was Jesus himself because their eyes were in the misery until they decided to invite him to spend the night. And when they sat for dinner, they realized who he was. But that invitation needs to happen, brothers and sisters, because if I do not invite him, he will not intrude in my home. My home. I need to invite Jesus over and over to be part of my life, to be part of my activities, so that I can always see in the one I have in front of me, him, Jesus. That it is through the love of Jesus, that we will be able to love one another. Yes, God has gave, you know, gave us all intelligence, and we certainly can do many things on our own, but not everything. He can see through everything. We can't. He, can, he knows the hearts of every person. None of us have that privilege. Sometimes we don't even know what's really inside of our own. But he can. And he certainly can guide us through. And he certainly be the one helping us to carry the loads of our lives. But I have to do that first step. I need to make sure that I invite him that this is not just something I do for the sake of doing, but because I truly believe who he is, that I truly believe of, he, of his power and of his love. As you come today to receive him, one more time, in the Eucharist, his body, his blood, his soul and divinity opened your heart to him and make the promise as you are consuming him to invoke his name to make him your guest of honor in your home in your houses in your jobs and on the streets so that he will shine through you for the world to see that's how we need to do it that is the magic the world of today needs, and we must do this. It's up to us, the ones who believe, to make that message spread like fire. We have to stop being in the trenches. And it's not about speaking, it's about behaving as Jesus was next to us which, by the way, he's always there. Receive him in that way, and you will tell the world all the wonders that he can provide. I believe.
in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of a Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on a third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to God of righteousness and truth with our heartfelt prayer. For the Holy Father and all who serve the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For all who seek wisdom of the Lord's word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For first responders and caregivers, that God may reward them for their heroism and give them comfort of knowing that they are living the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For love, tolerance, and understanding in our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the deceased, especially our parishioners, family, and friends, May they rest in eternal life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray for the members of our parish family for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of holiness, you lovingly renew our minds and spirits. We seek your mercy as we offer these prayers through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary, by saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, in accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world, then in your mercy you send us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and made them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the Son to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously may holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. O Lord, 
Lord, as we celebration we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Teresa of Lisieux, the little flower, and all the saints who, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of these family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Minister of Holy Communion will go up to the balcony for those of who are there.
sisters and men are in the desert. But this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and Let us pray. <clears throat> Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Adam, it's all yours. Thank you, Father. Good morning to you all. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you here at Church of the Little Flower for these past two months of service to this wonderful community of faith. Jesus Christ is truly present among us. In a special way, I would like to thank Father Manny, Father Omar, the clergy and parish staff, the sisters, for their hospitality and encouragement. In a few weeks, I will be returning to St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary in Boynton Beach to begin my second year of theology. I would ask you to please keep me and my brother seminarians in your prayers. Today, the Archdiocese of Miami is taking up a second collection entitled the Seminary Burst Fund. As stated by Archbishop Wensky, the Seminary Burst Fund supports the work of the seminary and the seminarians, our future priests. 
Currently, there are 47 seminarians studying for the priesthood in the Archdiocese of Miami. Thanks be to God, I am a beneficiary of this fund, and I want to thank you for your generous support, which does not go unnoticed. I am sure we can count on your continued support. Before I depart today, I would like to leave you with a quote from St. Alphonsus Liguori, whose memorial is celebrated today, August 1st. After the love which we owe Jesus Christ, we must give the chief place in our heart to the love of his mother, Mary. Therefore, I ask that Mary, our blessed mother, continue to watch over us and protect us along with her most chaste spouse, St. Joseph. May God bless you and your families. St. Therese of the Child Jesus, the little flower, pray for, pray for us. Thank you. Now remember, Adam, this is always your house. Thank you, Father. Please, easy. Good morning. My name is Izzy, and I'm here on behalf of Encuentros Juveniles to invite the youth to a personal encounter with Christ. Our next retreat will be September 17th through the 19th for young women ages 18 through 25. It will be at Casa Cursillos. If you have any questions, we'll be outside of the church after Mass. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you, Lisi. So there you go. Now the youth start to move and continue the, in a ministry. So one more opportunity for you young ladies this time, right, to get to know Christ a little better. Take advantage of it. And remember, it's always an act of faith. But we must always call into Jesus. If we really want to be happy people, if we really want to go through life with a smile, we need him. Without him, it's too difficult. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Have a wonderful week. Rosie, Rosie.